technology has opened up a lot of opportunities, but at the same time has given us a lot of reasons to be concerned. I work at Witness, an international human rights organization that leverages the power of video and technology in the defense of human rights. And so what we do at Witness is that we support communities and activists to leverage the power of video in exposing injustice and pursuing accountability. However, over the past few years, there has been rising concern around the emergence of AI-enabled synthetic media. In other words, through the use of artificial intelligence, people are now able to more easily manipulate media. And that has us really worried. A lot of the use case scenarios of AI have been fun. And um, some of you might remember the app called Face App. Maybe some of you even played around with it. It's that app that allowed you to manipulate your photograph, including checking how you would look when you got much older. Um, so for now, some of the use case scenarios can be fun. And this is something that I also toyed around with using Face App. I definitely don't wear glasses, uh, but it doesn't look bad on me either. There is also Wumble, which is an app that allows you to use your picture to create a video of you lip syncing to a favorite song of yours, um, any song of your choice precisely. And I got the permission of my wife to create this Wumble um, and the results had us both um, laughing and, you know, having fun over it. Never ending forever. But while all of this can be fun, um, it also signals something a bit more dangerous, the decline of the truth. And here is a more sophisticated example of what I'm talking about. Here is a TikTok video of uh, the popular Hollywood actor, Tom Cruise, playing golf, except that it's actually not Tom Cruise. What's up, TikTok? You guys cool if I play some sports? I love it. More for the audio experience. As much as the momentum. Hey, listen up, sports and TikTok fans. If you like what you're seeing, just wait till what's coming next. So the video of Tom Cruise you just saw is actually a deep fake version of Tom Cruise. And I'll give you another example. Here is a video right now on your screen showing you a location, but with two different seasons. I want you to look closely and see if you can spot anything. What you're actually seeing is one real season and another one that has been artificially generated. I'll give you a second to guess which season is real and which one isn't. Well, if you said the snowy footage was the real one, you're wrong. The sunny season is actually the real one, while the snowy one was the one that was artificially generated. Okay, so here is another example from Adobe After Effects. Now, Adobe has a feature called the Content Aware Feel Tool which allows anybody to be able to seamlessly remove objects from a video. This is something that you could have easily done prior on Photoshop and um, photographs generally, but now it's been you know, mainstreamed into video editing platforms. These innovations clearly have their benefits. For instance, in the case of the weather manipulation example that I shared, you can use that to train self-driving cars to adapt to different weather conditions in different cities. And in the case of the Adobe tool, you can actually use that as a cinematographer. I'm sure that's a blessing for those who are into filmmaking, to be able to take out unwanted objects in their video to make it more cinematic. However, imagine this. What if people started to use these tools to cause harm? 
What if perpetrators of crime started to use some of these tools to take out critical evidence of human rights atrocities that they have committed themselves? What if people start to create realistic deepfakes of political leaders calling for violence? What if real authentic videos of human rights abuses start getting dismissed just because you are not sure whether it has been manipulated or not. Unfortunately, some of these situations are not just mere speculations or imaginations. We currently, in the real world, are seeing how deepfake technology is being used to cause harm. There's research that's been carried out by this organization called Sensity AI. And one of the findings that they came up with is that the most common use of deepfake technology is for digital sexual violence. And about 90% of those that have been targeted have been women. So you see, there is a lot of harm that's already been caused as a result of these technologies. The question becomes, what can we do? I'll tell you that there are a number of things that we can do for sure. And starting with the innovators of technology themselves, they need to bear responsibility knowing fully well that their innovations can be used to cause harm. And so innovators of technology need to prioritize issues of human rights, ask the question, how can my innovation possibly and potentially be used by bad actors to cause harm? Bring civil society to the table. Let us brainstorm together and figure out how to ensure that technology innovations do not lead to even further human rights abuses. Secondly, we are at that point where we all need to develop some sort of verification skill set. Let people start to you know, learn how to digitally verify pieces of media content to be sure what is authentic and what is not. Thirdly, from the perspective of witness as an organization is the fact that we will continue to train people to document human rights abuses, but to do that in the most ethical and trustworthy way to ensure that their videos that they may have taken a lot of risk to document are not dismissed as being fake. Finally, we all must take personal responsibility. We must understand that the things that we share, the apps that we use and the manner in which we use them and the technologies that we innovate can all contribute to our understanding and relationship with the truth. They can potentially begin to chip away at what we have come to know the truth to be.